Hello, Sex Geek. It's Reed Mahelko from ReadAboutSex.com, creator of SexGeekSummerCamp.com. We are 58 days out from Sex Geek Summer Camp happening in West Virginia. Uh, and that's exciting. As you sign on, say hi from wherever you're at today. And then also say if you've ever spoken at a, a conference before, at a sex ed conference, um, or any kind of conference, because uh, there are a lot of different people who watch these videos, and I've been uh, just very happy for everybody who watches the business uh, videos who's not a sex educator, who's been getting a lot of good stuff out of the business conversation videos, um, trying to keep these you know, kind of relegated to folks who do sex education or intimacy education uh, or fall under that sex positive entrepreneur, sex positive professional umbrella. But a lot of the business advice and tactics and strategies and just kind of ideas that we talk about apply to just business in general and how do you build a career and um, how do you reach people and how do you help people. And so for people who've been getting a lot out of those, that's awesome too. So if you've ever spoken at a conference, even if you're not a sex educator, let us know. Just tell us what your experience has been. Uh, share, share with the audience. But today, I'm going to talk about a couple of mistakes that I have made in the past for submitting proposals to conferences. And tonight is the big deadline. Um, the deadline for the National Sex Ed Conference. And if you go to sexedconference.com forward slash proposals, the, um, the conference deadline tonight is, uh, is midnight Eastern, Eastern Standard Time. Um, so the first mistake is, um, is don't wait till the last minute to submit your proposals. However, I'm just going to let you know that 60% of the submissions I've ever done were probably done on the last day. Uh, so I don't even heed my own advice. But what I will tell you is make sure you know when their deadline actually is. Because if you're on the West Coast and you think it's midnight West Coast time, and you're, you know, you finally get home from your other job, and you're, um, you know, trying to bang out your proposal, and boop, you've already missed the deadline because you're three hours behind, and you think, you know, it's midnight Pacific time, and it's not. So, you know, one thing is to just get really clear about your deadlines, put those deadlines in your calendar, put those reminders. Uh, in your calendar and then um, however you want to inspire yourself or hold yourself accountable or get a bunch of your friends together to kind of do a submission party where everybody shows up with tea and hot cocoa and beer whatever you, you're drinking these days coconut water whatever electrolytes Gatorade um, and then uh, a bunch of you sit down at your tables with your laptops and you just bang out your proposals together that can be really great and also kind of build community and you can even do those little submission parties um, over Skype or Zoom or Blue Jeans, whatever video conferencing app you can use Google Hangout. So the, like ways for you to one, not feel alone and two, actually make your deadline. If you're like me and you actually, you know, don't get to things until the very last day, don't beat yourself up. I kind of know this about myself. Um, I do feel like I'm thinking about my proposal in the background, and uh, and I guess kind of regurgitated or spit it all out uh, on the final day because deadlines just work like that for me. Um, so you know, an, like another point five mistake. This won't be the big three. Um, don't spend a lot of time beating yourself up for not doing it sooner. Uh, adding all that loathing and shame and guilt on top of the pressure of having to get it done in time. I just don't think it's really useful. So just love, love yourself, 
for being um, a last minute kind of person if that's truly your thing. And, uh, and get it done. Get her done. Send it in. Um, other mistakes that I think people make is they think that they have to do the thing alone. Um, and so I'm a big proponent for submitting discussion panels, especially for me as a cisgendered white guy. Uh, panels can be really great because I can have a, I can help um, invite a lot of different voices. And please, 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 please try to be mindful around diversity and inclusion. And, you know, don't just have, uh, mostly I'm speaking to, to uh, my white folk friends here. Um, try to have a panel that is not completely all uh, white people, uh, especially white cisgendered men. Um, unless it's a panel about white cisgendered men, which you could do. Um, but, you know, try to get a lot of different voices and, um, and diversity in your panels because it just helps. It just makes the world a better place. And, again, you know, if you fuck that one up, uh, you know, apologize if somebody calls you out or calls you in on it and do better the next time. And, again, it doesn't have to be just race. You know, folks with disabilities, it can be people of size, it can be, you know, a variety of ages, um, it can be, you know, people, you know, with PhDs and people without PhDs and whatever. Like, just be, if you can, be more creative and thoughtful about how you can make discussion panels more diverse. It's really powerful stuff. And, you know, because you might be, um, there's, I don't even know if the right word is for this. So, so whoever can help me out with the, with the words for this, let's find the words. But it's almost like with shy people and extroverted people, um, and is it mid, mid traverts or ambiverts? Um, but like, I think there's kind of a person who just really likes typing and submitting proposals. And it's like they're the extrovert of the submitting proposal world. Um, and so you have a privilege. Uh, you have the power to submit things and you know put proposals out there. And you get to invite the, the introverted proposal people, the people who, who for whatever reason, um, you know, don't submit a talk, but you get to invite them to be on your panel, to be on your talk. So, you know, there, whatever that word is, if there's a word for that, um, you know, you get to also be diverse and help get people's voices into the conversations and the, um, you know, lived experiences of others who might not normally get to be on a discussion panel. So this is really fun and interesting for me when I can get to do it. Um, sometimes I'm not organized enough. I've waited to the last minute. So I can't really submit a discussion panel because I need to find and get yeses from everybody. Um, so sometimes, if you're a last minute person like me, sometimes you a discussion panel is not going to work. you got to put a little bit more forethought uh, in planning into this. But when you do a discussion panel, and I, and I think this discussion panels are awesome and super useful and great ways for you to also build your reputation and your career if you're somebody who can give good proposal to create really good panels. Um, so, you know, that mistake of don't think it just has to be you doing your presentation solo. Um, you know, always ask, like, is there, you know, can I do this as a panel? Can I do this as a collaboration? Um, and how can I get more people's voices into the mix? So just, um, just consider that. I think that that, that can be really useful and, uh, and it adds a lot when you can bring more voices in. And another, another mistake 
that I have made in the past is, and this is one I really have to thank the National Sex Ed Conference for because their proposal process is actually kind of, it's a little bit tough, like it's pretty, um, you kind of have to have your shit together. And, you know, they needed a, a, a curricula biate, a CV, um, they needed, uh, because of the, pro the proposal process and the way that they like to have talks qualify for continuing education credits, which is really big for uh, a lot of social workers and sex therapists and certain people in education-based um, uh, organizations, they have a really, um, it's not like stringent, but it's a really detailed submission process so that they can figure out if your talk will qualify for um, CEUs. And what's really interesting about their submission process is it can feel really daunting compared to other conferences where you're just kind of submitting a talk and, um, and your bio and a picture. So the other mistake that I think slows a lot of people down is they've never submitted a proposal to a professional conference that requires a really detailed submission process. Um, and so the, the way I think you can undo that mistake is to submit talk proposals and discussion panels to conferences that are that are like that so because you're like oh my goodness this is so difficult but what you're really doing is getting better at the submission process so that you're not so daunted by conferences that require you know you just upload your CV um, for you to have your learning objectives figured out um, you know and to really kind of cross your T's and dot your I's so that their organization can figure out if your talk is, qualifies for what they need. Um, if you can get good at that kind of submission process, then it just makes you better at submitting and pitching talks to all kinds of conferences, and then you kind of exercise your submission conference muscles and you just get stronger in those ways and you have more clarity for how you pitch a talk. And for that alone, I would recommend, if you've got time today, before midnight Eastern Standard Time, that you might wanna take a swipe at submitting something for the National Sex Ed Conference. Um, I love that conference, it's awesome. Um, the Center for Family Life and Education um, and Bill Tabner and the whole crew and uh, I don't even know all the amazing people that are helping put the, the organizing committee it's the ice cream guy um, the uh, organizing committee is they're just working their asses off but um, but you might want to take a swipe at submitting a proposal or at least looking at what their requirements are so you can start to become familiar with that kind of conference submission if you can get good at this kind of proposal, you can do any kind of proposals and not be daunted. And then as a sex educator, it makes you even better at how you pitch your talks to colleges, um, to other professional uh, organizational uh, meetings. Um, so it's because of the National Sex Ed Conference that I felt really comfortable submitting a proposal to a gathering of health professionals that work in colleges. And that, for me, was a really good idea as a sex educator because the thing I wanted to talk about and um, the topic was really useful for the demographic, but also for the people who organize and run the health departments on college campuses I, for the thing I wanted to talk to them about, it was also good positioning because those people 
would also be in charge of who they might bring in to speak on their college campuses during the year. So, you know, sometimes you can, for some of you, in doing these submissions, you'll realize that there are business opportunities and ways for you to position yourself um, for speaking gigs and things like that. That's a little bit, maybe a little bit more advanced uh, a stra strategy for, um, oh, that dog scared me. Uh, it's a little bit more of a, of a outside of the box looking at things from a strategic perspective. But, you know, you, get to, you can look uh, for conferences and annual meetings, organizational meetings, where people are, uh, where you can get in front of the people who want to hear and learn interesting stuff, stuff that fulfills their need to get continuing education credits or units. Um, and you can put yourself and your expertise in front of people who might be making the hiring decisions for you know bringing speakers and educators onto their campus or into their organizations. Um, so I think a mistake is shying away from really complex submission proposal guidelines and stuff like that because you've never done them before. At some point, get good at doing them or find somebody who's really good and undaunted about doing the submission process and bribe them with food, uh, beverages, um, buy them, uh, you know, ex uh, massages or something, whatever, expensive sex toys, and ask them to help you. Because again, you don't have to do any of this long. I think I'll stop there. I'm enjoying this walk. I need to get outside. So thank you again, everyone, for giving me an excuse to get the hell away from my computer for a little bit. Even though I just leave my computer and sit in front of my phone, but at least we get to go outside and walk around the neighborhood. I'll uh, check the comments when I get inside. I'll, again, at the National Sex Ed Conference, uh, their link for proposals is sexedconference.com forward slash proposal. The deadline is tonight. And um, if you don't want to submit something or you're not ready, you're not a bad person. Don't beat yourself up. It's okay. There are lots of submission deadlines I don't make. I, I don't get around to it. Um, I beat myself up, uh, and then I try to stop beating myself up for being a bad person for not getting those submissions in. Uh, so please forgive yourself. Um, tell me I can forgive myself as well, and uh, let's not try to feel guilty or more shame about other stuff, since our job is to help people feel uh, feel less shame and more pleasure in their lives. So maybe we can do that around business as well. Uh, also, if you're considering coming to Sex Geek Summer Camp, then uh, please go to readaboutsex.com forward slash camp, F-A-Q, and, uh, and register soon. We have a free payment option that's going away soon. And um, so for those of you who need that kind of, who need to break payments down to, on a monthly basis, Please jump on that now, because once I shut that that off, uh, it's a pain in the ass to turn it back on, and um, and we're going to be busy putting together the biggest camp we've ever had. It looks like we're going to have tons of people. I'm very excited about this, and uh, we've got sponsors coming on that I'll start announcing soon, and um, I'm excited about that. And what else? That's it. So check out camp. 58 days out, uh, people are getting their bunk beds in their cabins, and those might run out this year. I think we, we've sold them out before, so make sure if you want a, a room upgrade or a bunk bed upgrade, you don't want to be just tenting and camping, then, uh, then register soon, because that comes on a first case, first serve, first register, first serve basis. And now it's really windy, so I'm going to let you go. Thanks for being a part of all this today. I hope the conference talk that we just had was useful. Let me know what was good about it for you and uh, any tips you have for submitting conference proposals. Leave them in the comments for everybody else and share this video with somebody, guys. Bye!